11 memorial ceremony. Uh, this is the Hudson Valley Council Community Band, and we are very pleased to present a program of patriotic and religious music to start the program. Our next selection will be a hymn called Matera, otherwise known as America the Beautiful. We sung it all a thousand times, and most of us know at least the first verse by ear. It has been called a hymn, a prayer, our unofficial national anthem, in short, the national heartbeat set to music. It is America the Beautiful, the song that has expressed the dreams of Americans, from Ray Charles to Elvis Presley, from eager immigrants to hopeful graduates, from the battlefields of World War I to the playing fields of the Super Bowl. Please enjoy and join us in America the Beautiful. Our next hymn is called Abide With Me, Tis Eventide. Abide With Me is a 19th century American Christian hymn written by Martin Laurelly Horford and Harrison Milford. The lyrics and music to the hymn were heavily influenced by the American Civil War. Our next hymn is called Nearer My God to Thee. It is a 19th century hymn by Sarah Flower Adams based on the book of Genesis, the story of Jacob's dream. Genesis can be translated as follows. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it in his head and laid down his, his head in that place to sleep. He then dreamed and behold, a ladder was sent up from the earth to the top of heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. This is dedicated to the 9-11 and the towers as the angels and souls went to heaven.
Our next song was written in the early 1970s, God Bless the USA. Very few patriotic songs were written in the early 70s and 80s. In 1984, singer-composer Lee Greenwood decided to increase patriotic awareness in America. He composed and performed God Bless the USA. We are proud to present this gold record award-winning rendition of God Bless the USA. As a tribute to the red, white, and blue, and what the colors stand for in our flag, there are two patriotic pieces that tell of our love for our flag. It is called Parade Set Number Two. It contains your grand old flag and stars and stripes forever. As they raised the flag over the towers, the firemen that day, this was what was in their mind, America forever.
Today, as we think about 9-11 and the people that lost their lives, we also must think about the people that attempted to stop 9-11 before it happened, those American soldiers that fought over in Iran and Iraq during Desert Storm. We now present the Desert Storm March, which was written in 1991 by Ken Harris. It is dedicated to all the brave men and women in Operation Desert Storm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Please rise as the, as the color procession comes in for the op uh, presents the colors for the opening ceremony. Thank you. Now I'd, I'd like to, the invocation will be given by the, Revi the, the Reverend Christina Smalley from the Full Gospel Stormville Union Chapel. Reverend Smalley, if you would please.
Almighty Father, we come before you today in remembrance of the victims of 9-11, these precious souls who are now in your holy presence. We pray for strength for their families and loved ones as this senseless tragedy continues to change their lives forever. Father, we pray for our armed forces, police, firefighters, EMS, and all who are called upon daily to put themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. Please go before them and provide your constant protection and blessing upon them. Lord, we also lift up our government leaders. Please provide them with wisdom to seek your guidance as they lead our country. Let us turn our eyes upon the, you, O Lord, as we humbly pray for your blessing upon this great nation. Keep America safe and powerful, a beacon of freedom and hope to all the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Reverend. At this time, I'd like to introduce Jacob Wiegart, honorary, honorary New York State President of the Children of the American Revolution and past president of the Highland Pass Society, who will lead tonight's ceremony. Jacob. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Please remi remain standing until the colors are posted. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America will be led by East Fishkill Town Supervisor, Mr. Hickman. Mr. Hickman? Yes. Please join me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. The American's Creed will be led by Highland Pass Society President Carl Mignot. I believe in the United, United States, States of America, America as a government, government by the people, by the people, for the people, the just powers are derived from the consent of the government, a democracy and a republic, the sovereign nation of many sovereign states a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity, for which American patriots sacrificed their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. Thank you, Carl. The preamble to the Constitution will be led by Sharon Filippini, Regent of Milzinga Chapter, Doors of the American Revolution. Mrs. Filippini. We, the people of the United States, in order to more, more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of a liberty to ordain and establish this Constitution of the American States of America. Thank you, Mrs. Filippini. The national anthem will be sung by Victoria Smith, a senior at Our Lady of Lords High School and New York State Organizing Secretary, Children of the American Revolution.
Thank you, Victoria. Supervisor Hickman, will you please retire the colors? Color guard, will you please retire the colors? Detail, order, arm. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Good evening. As members of the oldest children's patriotic organization in America, Highland Pass Society Children of the American Revolution, it is our honor to once again organize this September 11th Remembrance Ceremony this evening. 14 years after the attacks of the United States of America, the memories are as clear today as they were the day our country was attacked by terrorists, September 11, 2001. At this time, the Hudson Valley Council Band, Boy Scouts of America, under the direction of Mr. Charles Hauserman, along with Victoria Smith, will perform the hymn, God Bless America. Thank you. We all have a story about September 11th. For the youth of our country, these stories may be what we have read or heard from our parents. However, many here this evening remember exactly where they were and what they were doing the very moment the first plane deliberately slammed into the World Trade Center in New York City, and the second, and the third into the Pentagon, and the fourth into the field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Many others know someone who overslept that morning someone who missed the train or had a doctor appointment or a sick child at home and didn't make it to work that day. Sadly, many of us here also know someone directly or indirectly who died in the terror attacks, either trying to escape or trying to help others escape. But how many of us know someone who is actually in the air, flying across America or home to America from another nation? 
Where did they go when an official order to close U.S. airspace had been given by the Federal Aviation Administration? This was the first time an order such this time, an, such an order had been given in the 98-year history of American aviation. I, for one, have never given thought to this. What happened to those folks? Where did they go? Where did their planes land? Earlier this summer, the evening of August 24th to be exact, my Aunt Heather and her two children, Corey, who was 13, and Samantha, who was five, were traveling back to England, where they had been living for the past year. As they were flying over the Atlantic Ocean, they lost electricity and had to make an emergency landing on the, loss on the Canadian island of Newfoundland. After getting some sleep at the Gander Hotel, they ventured out to get something to eat. At a small gift shop, my aunt picked up a book titled The Day the World Came to Town, 9-11 in Gander, Newfoundland. She, when she called us to tell they were okay, Heather asked, do you realize where we are? And so, the stories of the people of Gander, their kindnesses and their generosity began to unfold and remind us of the solemn spoken heroes. On September 11th, 2001, as the world awoke to the news of the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City, thousands of unsuspecting people were already in the air flying towards the destinations in America. As the attacks broadened, America, America realized she, she was under attack, and all flights coming into the USA received faxes, faxes that simply stated all airways over the constitutional U.S. are closed. Land ASAP to the nearest airport and advise your dest destination. Situation: 38 jetliners from around the world, 27 of them were American, landed in Gander, Newfoundland. It wasn't until they landed and saw all the other planes on the tarmac that everyone knew it was just how serious other planes the situation was, in fact, since World War II, there hadn't been that many planes on the Thermatic in Gander. As the pastors that that look, looked out at all the pla places, planes that they could also see cars as far as the eyes could see. People drew far all over the to to see what was going on they it was the then the, the pilots began to share the news of the terror attacks with with pa passengers. Thank you. Everyone was stunned to learn of the attacks, the collapse of the Twin Towers, and the thousands of deaths that occurred. 
Due to a different cellular system in Canada, most cell phones did not work. Everyone was frightened, but stayed calm. Deplaning was done systematically and only one plane at a time. It took all night and most of the next day to get every passenger and flight crew member off of the planes, registered with the Red Cross, and taken to shelters. All school meeting halls, lodges, and any other large gathering place within a 50 mile radius of Gander were converted into shelters for the stranded plane people, as they began to be called. All flight crews were taken into local hotels and inns. Elderly and infirmed passengers were taken into homes by the local folk. In 2001, Gander had a population of about 10,000 people. On September 11th, that population doubled for a few days as more than 6,500 people got stranded there. The entire region put their lives on hold to take care of their unexpected guests. Bakeries stayed open 24 hours a day. Pharmacies filled prescriptions for free. High school students volunteered to help with whatever they could. School bus drivers drove everyone around. Shop owners declined payment. The arena at the Gander Community Center became a giant walk-in fridge for food donations, and everyone received three meals a day. People brought out blankets, cots, and sleeping bags to shelters. People opened their homes for the plain people to take showers. The people of Gander acted as tour guides and took anyone who wanted to go on hiking expeditions or boat rides. Phone banks were set up and school computer labs were made accessible for the people to send and receive emails. Local televisions played the news in America 24 hours a day. The people of Gander and the surrounding areas were kind and generous beyond words. A group of people who will so willingly came together and without realizing it reminded so many people of the genuine kindness of strangers. I believe that all of us have a natural inclination to help others in the time of need, and the people of Gander prove that to be true. For 238 years, our great nation has used faith, courage, and prayer to guide us through war, natural disaster, and national crisis. The worst of these being September 11, 2001, when the United States of America was attacked and thousands of innocent lives were taken. At this time, Mr. Hauserman and the Hudson Valley Council Band will perform a special song titled Chester. In dedication to all who lost their lives on 9-11 and all those who still suffer from that terrible day, the band would like to dedicate the hymn Chester. Chester, written in 1770, shows America's desire to fight tyranny and live free, never forgetting the people who sacrificed for our freedom. Thank you so much, Mr. Hauserman and the members of the Hudson Valley Council Band. On the morning of September 11, 2001, 2,976 innocent people died when terrorists attacked us on our own soil. Tonight, 14 years later, we come together once again to honor their memories and pay tribute to the nearly 3,000 civilian, military, police, and fire personnel who died that awful day. We are humbled by the sacrifices of all these unspoken heroes and recall their sacrifices made by their families as well. Tonight, during our candle ceremony, we will light our candles, not only in memory of those lives lost on September 11, 2001, but we will also reflect on the lessons learned since that faithful day. The first candle is lit 
this evening in memory of the 2,976 innocent people who died on September 11th. The second candle is lit in honor of all the airline captains and flight attendants who stayed calm amid chaos and kept their passengers safe from harm on September 11th. The third candle is lit in honor of the Canadian government who so willingly allowed 38 jetliners from around the world to land in Gander on the island of Newfoundland knowing of the terrorist attacks in the United States and yet not knowing if any of the flights coming into their country still had terrorists aboard. And the fourth candle is lit in appreciation for the people of Gander, the kindness and generosity shown to strangers in a time of need by our friends and neighbors to the north will never be forgotten. As the East Fishkill 14th annual, annual September 11th Remembrance Ceremony comes to a close, please stand and bow your heads in prayer. May all of us remember with love and compassion this day. May we grieve with those who still mourn and share memories with those who cannot forget. May we draw strength from those who bravely responded and gave their lives to save others. May we stand with strangers who became neighbors that day and remember their generosity and hospitality. Above all, God, may we remember your faithfulness and learn from your unfailing love. Amen. Before we leave and go safely to the serenity of our own homes, please remember to live each day to its fullest and never miss an opportunity to let those closest to you know you love them. Mr. Hauserman and the Hudson Valley Band We'll close out this evening's program with a rendition of Concert Taps. Thank you all for coming this evening and remembering this special day. Tonight, as we put to rest another year since our country was attacked, we thank God for the many blessings he has so graciously bestowed upon us, especially during the last 14 years. Before we end this evening, I have one special request. Last year, while we were here at the ceremony, my cousin Loretta was at Vassar having a baby. Please join me in wishing Joshua a very happy first birthday. Victoria, will you lead us in happy birthday? Thank you all for coming. Please get home safely.